Um, I'm an, an airbrush artist by trade, but when I started this painting, uh, I knew it had to be done in oils. So uh, being my first oil painting, I am very proud of it. And I worked on this painting that you see. It's uh, uh, so far about 6,700 hours, uh, two and a half years of my life uh, into it. Um, some people say it became an obsession, like my wife. Uh, but it became a, a true work of love that I couldn't let go. So I'd go in in the morning at six, five, six in the morning, every morning, and I'd leave, get home at 10. If I ate, my wife and my kids brought it over to me. Uh, but um, for the most part, uh, I guess you could say it was a work of love. My nephew was over in Afghanistan for his second tour at that time when <clears throat> uh, December 6, 2008, um, I heard the day before that we had lost uh, a number of young men in Afghanistan and, you know, like most people who had a loved one over there, uh, I, um, I was afraid to look at the newspaper the next morning, knowing that he was there and it could have been him. Um, but that morning I got a real eye opener. When I opened the newspaper, I didn't <laughs> looked at that newspaper that morning and I seen that we had lost 100. Even though my nephew wasn't on that uh, newspaper that morning, there was a hundred little faces about the size of a postage stamp looking at me. And as an artist, you uh, you kind of feel, you know, you look into those young men's eyes and you know that now they're all gone and what, and women and what they've done. So I thought I had to do something and it had to be uh, special. Now at first it was, my mind was to make sure that all our legions, all our um, people in Ontario seen it um, but as I was painting and I had the families come in thanking me for what I did soldiers crying and thanking me for allowing them to look into their eyes and say goodbye I knew that all of Canada had to see this I had um, an opportunity meeting with a couple of Afghanistan people but one that really hits home is uh, an Afghanistan interpreter that was brought over to Canada to give some speeches and some of the big major market dinner galas. He came into my studio and uh, first thing I asked him was, was this worth it? Pointing at my painting, said, are our guys doing any good over there or was this a waste of life? And he said, you know, the Canadians are a different group. He said, they, they look into our elders' eyes and shake their hand. They don't point a gun in their face. He said, they give our kids candies and trinkets sent from home even though at first our kids were throwing rocks and calling them names and throwing sticks at them. But now they look forward to the Canadians marching through their streets and their villages. And he said, um, in our district alone, we have over 30,000 young girls going to school that were never allowed to go to school. He said, you're helping us build the uh, dam out there and helping us with uh, showing us how to build irrigation systems. Um, he said, you're also teaching our our military, our police, your RCMP are over there along with your military showing us how to operate a government. So he said, I look at you as a, you're doing it right. You're not just coming in and bombing the hell out of us and, and then creating havoc and leaving. Yous are at least taking the time to teach us so we can take care of our own. So he said, please don't think they die in vain because we lose this many people pointing at my painting on a regular basis and a lot of them children. So he said, um, with your help, someday we'll have what you take for granted every day. So that's a, a major thing that I try to spread and that we should be showing the respect to our military every day, not just November the 11th. And these young men and women that you see in my painting are the ones that um, are keeping remembrance alive. And as you've seen today in that parade of thousands of young kids, um, it makes me feel great knowing that these young men and women are going to be remembering it for many, many years, what they've seen, and they'll have a little bit more of a heart towards Remembrance Day, other than maybe just a day off school or uh, a day away from the class. As far as the country goes, um, my wife and I have been very extensive travelers. We love traveling across Canada. But uh, we've been in areas that we've never been to. You know, um, up here, for instance, up in northern Alberta area, um, that's just so beautiful. And the people have been 
so respectful, so they, they've shown me that Canadians are true um, admirers, lovers of our military, and they, they do have a lot of pride, even though for a long time, like I said, they weren't showing it, but I see it every day, and uh, I'm thinking, my goodness, guys like uh, uh, Mr. Rick Hilliard, General Hilliard, uh, who helped get this started to show Canadians that we should be proud of our military. Guys like Don Cherry, who keep it going on Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, I, I think they're very strong parts of uh, putting that pra pride back in our military. And so I feel very honored just to be following in their footsteps and carrying it on. Um, I was getting my picture taken with, probably, I think about a grade four or five class. And uh, the teacher said, uh, do you have any questions? Asked Mr. Sofa. And a lot of them had some questions and she said to him, would you like to see Mr. Sofa put more faces in his painting? Everybody kind of questioned it. And one little boy put his hands up and he said, no, that would mean that more died. And I thought, oh my goodness, you know, these little guys do get it. You know, so it makes you feel uh, a little teary-eyed, but uh, great, great feeling coming from it. I've had family members that have been coming up and thanking me the other day in um, Edson, Alberta, um, when we were there, a mother came up to me and gave me her son's dag, uh, dog tag and said uh, uh, Cole, was, uh, Cole would be honored if you would wear this. And it's a picture of him on his dog, um, a dog tag. And so I'm very proud to wear it. And Robert's mom gave me uh, is Christopher in a cross that he wore. And she said, you're with my son every day, so I'd like you to have it. And I felt guilty about taking it, but she insisted over and over again. So I thought I'd be honored to wear it. But when we were up in Edson, a uh, couple of young girls, the sisters of Raymond uh, Arnault came up to me and said, uh, thanked me and cried and looked into their brother's eyes. And she said, my dad, wanted to see me and was following this for a long time, but uh, the day before he had a heart attack and was in the hospital. So you see those photos that I have in front representing all of the Alberta fallen. Um, I picked it up and I said, okay, well, let's go to the hospital. And I met with him. When we went into the room, uh, just before going in, the nurse said he's pretty tired and he may not want to see anybody. One of the daughters went in and said I was there. So he said, nurse, put my take, put my bed up. And uh, it was pretty emotional listening to a father talk about his son and thanking me for what I did and thanking me for taking the time to go over and see him. So, been a very emotional trip. Like I say, I've had soldiers drop to the knees in tears. Um, I've had soldiers that were wounded. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, to help raise funds to help those. And uh, that one gentleman, Chris Downey, uh, was in the blast when Greg Blake died, uh, Petty Officer Greg Blake. And he, uh, he got very extensive injuries to his face and head. And they had been many operations to get him back in shape. But that day he uh, rode from Lloydminster to Cold Lake escorting on a motorcycle. He escorted us right through, along with 91 of his buddies on their motorcycles, escorted us to Cold Lake. And then from there, they escorted us uh, the following day all the way up to Fort McMurray on a bike, six and a half hours. And uh, he got up and when he gave a speech, there wasn't a dry eye in the whole place. And he said, um, I gotta thank Dave for allowing me to escort my buddy home because we always talked about if something happened to any one of us, uh, make sure you're there to escort me home. And he said, I finally got to do it because I wasn't able to do it. They rushed him off to Germany to the hospital. And uh, some of those stories that you hear every day, it's just pretty overwhelming. And there's been times when I've gone into my motor home and just cried like a baby myself. And, um, but it's been very rewarding. I've been very lucky that my my wife has even stayed with me for the last uh, three years, uh, being that uh, using up our our retirement and everything else. And uh, now she's 
spent six months, uh, or she's going to spend six months with me traveling across the country. So, we still have the East Coast to do, so we're doing about three months through Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, PEI, and New Brunswick, and back into Quebec. Um, we're supposed to be finishing off in December in Wainwright, and then for a big celebration. Then they're going to have a huge celebration, Welcome Home, in December. Then I want to um, build a museum, a place where this can be a home, uh, find a home. Uh, to me, it's very important that it doesn't just get rolled up and put in the archives. I've had requests to take it to Washington to show the Americans, uh, actually at the request of the Americans, and, and that uh, asked me, they said, uh, maybe we can get a little bit of what you have. You Canadians, you may not be the flag wavers, but you certainly know how to honor your fallen. So they want me to take it to Washington. A lot of the Marines and, um, may go to Juneau Beach to our new war museum to sit for a short period. I met with the mayor of Normandy and uh, he kind of reassured me that Normandy was already talking about it and Juneau Beach was up. So I was quite honored with that. And, but my, my dream is to build a museum next. That might take another couple of years of my life, but um, along our Highway Heroes 401 in Ontario where I can maybe get some of those other stories out through Golan Heights, Bosnia, Somalia, and all those ones that we as peacekeeping nations served and helped with. Those are stories that need to be told and uh, need to come out. I know not counting Korea, not counting Afghanistan, we've lost over 360 men that nobody knows about, you know, other than maybe the families remember they lost a loved one may not be able to get them all painted over in the next rest of my lifetime, but I'm going to certainly give it a try and maybe have a, a room for every one of those campaigns, if I can get the faces. So, got a lot of dreams. I'm a little guy with a lot of dreams, but um, for the most part, they usually come true for me. Hopefully with the pride that I see in Canadians, they'll help me get it done. Mm -hmm.